So, so tonight's topic is the bone of depreciation, right? And that's a picture of Ellen. She's our gatekeeper for all things acquisition. If we, if, if we have a deal that you want us to underwrite and give you feedback, this all Ellen, she's the gatekeeper of, um, of the of most of the underwriting asset. So if she if she gives us a go, we all stop everything and listen to her. And if she gives us a no go, then it's a no go. So Ellen, I know I thought I'll share her pictures. Um, she doesn't join with us here much, but I always uh, just want to share that we have a team behind us. Uh, we rely on our team heavily to do some of the work that we do. And as before, I get into depreciation. As you all have seen today, there was a rate cut. All right, you know, more than what we expected. Market priced in quarter basis point, and we ended up cutting at 50 basis points, right? Uh, the interesting part is it is the we have seen that coming a little bit on a different side of the business from the residential side. We have seen some warm up on the pricing, and then that cascaded into that. So, also on that note, remember there's a lot of emotion that kicked in today. And the emotion, the ride, the vibe will happen. And you're going to hear in the news, rate cut happen. It is the, and right now, buyers are going to be here. Sellers are going to be here. Money is going to be here. Those are somewhat of it true, but not all that true, right? You have to go listen to the news that kind of go, go through it. A point is, there's a rate cut today, and we're planning on a couple of more rate cuts coming up uh, over the years. Uh, as you go, the next one should be after the election. Uh, but from the acquisition side, whatever the rate is today, and if we close a property, let's say tomorrow within the next 90 days, even the rate changes, our rate uh, isn't changing. So we have what we have within the next 60 days. So uh, if you buy any asset, the rate is fixed uh, until you refi, which is three years out as you go. So that's one. So go to the news. And the second thing, the half a percentage point, it's really not gonna make or break any deal. That means if someone has to sell, they really have to sell. Right, and that half a percentage point will help a little bit, but not to a point it's going to make the project profitable um, on the spot. On that note, uh, the biggest news that we had from the massive side, uh, we have our first asset that we bought in Pasadena. It was right when the rate cut happened, uh, which is we purchased the property at a 3.98 percent interest rate, 3.89 percent interest rate, and we didn't even collect the first check. The rate went up above six percent. So, uh, so that was the gift that we had from the feds. It was a $16,000 increase in the monthly payment, not even uh, in first 30 days. That asset, we got the code, the loan code yesterday that we are uh, planning on doing a cash out refi in Q, end of the Q1 next year, within five months, it's a hard loan and it's a cash out. So we'll take all the, we'll reset the loan with the stabilized debt, with the lower interest rate, five, 5.4 or 5.5-ish all in. Uh, so that's the first of our asset that we're able to execute the refi. So rate cut helps. Uh, it, it didn't make the project profitable. It, it's obvious they gave us some breathing room. So from the project side, we slipped the project by six months, but we're back to the five years plan. We're almost back to the five years plan by refining it. So instead of refining in this year, we're refining in next year. It's about six, seven months delay, but we have executed the project. Our cash earning is the highest amount of cash that we collected from the property. It is stabilized. Economic vacancy is very low. So even though we have executed and on the interest rate really helped. Uh, so that was the best news, right? So interest rate helps. All right, so so uh, this Q3 and the Q4 series, sorry about the typo. Uh, so what we're gonna talk about the next the next quarter is optimizing income for income tax. And the first session today is understanding the depreciation and how does that work and how it's gonna help you today and how you can position yourself from uh, for next year. The very, at, at the bottom of the slide, uh, I want you and everyone to read a little bit. Understanding and planning for personal NOI has exceptional value creation for the amount of work needed. Think about that for a second. We talk about property NOI, but you as an individual, we have an individual, we have our own NOI as well. Uh, taxation is tough, it's pain, it's not fun, but it's really fun when you get into it. It may take 10, 15 hours a year maybe to do that, but once you do that, you can optimize your tax planning all the time, and then it becomes more fun. So our our tag tagline is not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Uh, so that's your personal NOI. So remember, you have a performer too. Right? So think about yourself as a PNL, as a profit center, and do, a, and do your PNL and calculate your NOI. And this is the time. This is September 
and you have three months to really optimize uh, for this year's tax. And after two months or so, you don't have much of a time. The last thing you want to do, call your CPA next year to fix this year's tax. This is the time you want to call to say, hey, help me out. And I have you know 90 days to fix my uh, or optimize my PL. And as you go. Okay. So as we talk about the uh, bonus depreciation, again, I, I'm going to go down a little bit more deep into it. Uh, what we'll talk about the tax laws that is affecting bonus depreciation now, and some of the strategies to maximize the cash flow, and some of the tools and resources for accurate calculation that we use. And we, last but not the least, we encourage all of you guys to take action. Uh, so I'll give you one of my um, um, this year. Uh, we brought in a full-time team member to help us out on the finance side. And just because she was able to do our tax planning right, the amount of savings that we had that paid for our salary plus more. So the point is, everybody here, if you take 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, talk to your CPA, and then have them do your tax strategy, it's going to benefit you. Worst case scenario, you don't get the benefit this year but you're gonna take an action towards the benefit next year or years to come. Point is, go talk to your CPA. On that note with the asterisks, do not go to CPA who you pay $500 to submit your LLC uh, or documentation. That's not the CPA who is going to optimize your income for your tax. There are CPAs, their role is to strategize the taxes and you go engage with them. And Bill Pilkington, one of our CPAs, uh, he does all of our work. So, but feel free to reach out to your CPA. All right, so let's let's get into bonus depreciation. What is it? So, as a passive investor, one of the vehicles that we have is, is, is we call it bonus depreciation. It's really a tax in, uh, incentive uh, that allows the business to immediately deduct a large percentage of the purchase price of the asset. So, so think about a house, right? When you buy a house, straight line, twenty-seven and a half to thirty years. But if we buy some of the assets, the 27 and a half to 30 years gets narrowed down to five years. That means you get extra write-off, right? So that's there. One of depreciation, it's you know, also known as the additional first year depreciation deduction. That means you, you bonus the year one. Instead of 30 years, you get to write off everything in the five years. The way you can think about it, more kitchens you have, more bathrooms you have, more ACs that you have, faster you can write off, right? Sometime, Maintenance of a bathroom is expensive, but guess what? It, it, it pays dividend to have you know, more toilets and more AC and HVAC systems. Uh, it was also created as a way to encourage investments by small businesses and st stimulate the, um, the whole, whole economy. Trump really came and helped, but the Republican came and really helped um, on that one. And uh, it is phasing out as of now, uh, which is it is going away. So bank it. So there are two things. Uh, depreciation is fantastic, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, it doesn't go away if you have it. So one thing is being able to receive the depreciation. Other thing is being able to use that uh, depreciation to write off. Uh, some of us, we can, and some of us, we cannot, depending on our job structure. But either way, it's fantastic to get it and save it. Why we talk it? Why we say that? Uh, in 2022, we had a 100% depreciation. That means if I invested a dollar, I had a almost a dollar write-off, right? At 2023, it went down to 80%. That means if, if we invested a dollar, we'll get about 80 cents write-off. And that means my total write-off. 2024 this year, if we invest a dollar, we get 60 cents. Next year, it's 40 cents. As the year goes by, uh, it's almost, you have to invest 40% more to get the same amount of investment, right? So at 2026, it phases, I mean, and it goes to zero, then it phases out. On that note, there was a, a, a rule proposed to the house uh, about bring it back the whole depreciation that did not go through. And if it did not go through now, uh, it, just, it just haven't made anything. It didn't go to Senate. So as of now, there is no rule in the works that's gonna come back and change the whole thing by saying that we'll go back and go back to 100%. Our position is based on as is, we're going to have a step down 40% next year and 20% here after 60% is what we have today. So bank it as much as you can, get it and save it down the way so you can use it. The beautiful thing about depreciation, again, it doesn't go away. If I get 60%, you know, this year, 60, uh, 60 cents lost for my dollar and 2020, I don't get to use it this year. 
But in 2026, if I sell something, if I have a profit, I can trade against it. So bank it, save it as much as you can. It is very imperative for you to have it. All right, so let me show the charts on it. So I'm going rather quick, uh, you know, then if you guys, again, uh, if you have questions, please let me know. And Phil, appreciate you joining. Uh, so great question, ST. I will, um, I'll come back and answer that question. So. If you look at the uh, you know, chart perspective on a single line depreciation from this side, it's, it's just straight line. If you spend $100,000, just like buying a single family house. So what happened is if you do accelerated depreciation, it collapses. It takes that that loss and it kind of brings it forward. So year one, you get a huge one. Typically you get 50% off available depreciation, then it kind of goes down. So that's the beauty of it. You take a straight line and you go down this way. On the typical residential, you don't get it. But if you have a large residential over a million, it start making sense. And on the depreciation side, because we have a cost that we have to incur to do the um, go through the process, it's about five to seven thousand dollars. So amount of you know depreciation you can get uh, versus the cost, uh, it, it started to make sense once you hit a million dollar ish or so. Uh, but on an apartment side, on a commercial side, we buy quite a bit larger asset, 5, 10, 20, 30 million dollars. So it makes a lot of sense. So and this is what the benefit comes about. Right. So how do we get it? The process of getting it is called cost segregation. So this is an IRS approved process of accelerating the depreciation for real estate assets. Uh, number two, it's like really typical building can be over and 27 and a half years or 40 years, but we can compress that in this way. So that's the that's the beauty of a, a bonus depreciation that we get, or someone calls it, or sometimes we call it accelerated depreciation. So you can really accelerate the whole depreciation from 30 years to really on the first five years. Okay, uh, that's a little joke. Don't wait. Uh, so uh, this was us. Uh, don't don't wait on it. It's not as of now. We don't know whether it's going to come back or not. So act like it's not coming back. And if it does come back, then it's fantastic. We get some extra bonus on top of that. Because what's going to happen is let's say let's say it comes back, right? That they're going to say sixty percent goes to hundred percent. So you get the forty percent bonus. But let's say it doesn't come back, you still have more. So as usual, uh, do the downside protection, and upside will happen, and that's going to be a bonus as you kind of do that, right? Okay, that's on the cost seg. Now let's bring the cost segregation and the depreciation put together as an example case. So at the very beginning, I was mentioning that we have the horizon. Um, and that's that's one of our multifamily property in San Antonio. We bought that in February this year and we operate that. We're going through the, um, the value add strategy and we're at the tail end where we finished the uh, exterior rehab. We finished the almost done, 80, 90% uh, we're done with the interior rehab. We changed the culture a little bit. And now we are on that cusp of getting uh, to the stabilization part of it. So question is, how would that fit in if someone invests $100,000 there, right? So on the right side, that's the example. Uh, uh, the way we optimize for taxation is that every $100,000 in, uh, invested in that property, you get $72,000 of paper loss. Roughly 39,000 loss we can realize this year. And the remaining one within four years gets 33. So that's the depreciation, uh, the part how, this is the real case study. We went through the cost segment, uh, the cost segregation, we paid the $7,000. Then the study said, we can get a little bit more than 60%. So we'll be end up realizing a 72% loss for that property. So if you, in other way, if you're, if you're a business owner, your gross income is, let's say a million dollar and your taxable income is $300,000 uh, or $400,000, what you do and you have your spouse is a real estate professional, uh, then you can invest. And guess what? If you invest half a million dollar, you get almost $400,000 to write off, then your taxable income goes down to very low. So not only you get a 20% return on your money, but also on top of that, you have $300,000 of extra money from the government at 0% that you get to reinvest. So that's the beauty of it. Uh, so this is the time we get all of our friends to call us by saying that, hey, I own the business. I looked at my gross potential income. I need to reduce that. 
let's go find a, a way to kind of place it. So that's that's one of the live case study uh, for, I mean, not case study, live example of what the investment looked like. So let's say you are in a place, you talk to the CPA, CPA says you should go spend some money, invest to reduce your taxable income. Then you need to do it to go find a project or find the team that you want to invest with. And then you look for a project that they have, and then you have to manage the execution risk. That means that if I were to go find a project uh, with, with the team, not only I have to like the team, but also I have to like the way they underwrite it, they operate it, let's say all the things checks out. Then the last thing is, do they have a deal that they are going to close before the year ends where I can place my money? So that is the risk you have to manage uh, in the next 90 days as you go. For in this particular case, we already own the process, so that risk goes away. All right, so uh, I'll stop here for the depreciation side. This is my uh, this is our pause point, and let me see. If, uh, and before I go, I uh, will get uh, Phil. I'll get you in about one second, and there's one more question I want to answer. That then I'll introduce with one of our dear friend. Um, SD was ask, uh, asking a question. Uh, no, uh, the answer is no. Uh, it, if you have a, again, I'm not a CPA, I'm just sharing from what I know, please consult with your CPA. So there, uh, the limit is not 25K, a limit is a percentage, uh, a three percentage point, uh, uh, and then it goes two ways. It, it's who we are and how we are set up. If I have a W2, then I have a limit, may or may not be 25K. And if I have a W2, and I'm married, filing jointly, and my spouse is a real estate professional, and she checks the definition out, then that limit goes away, it becomes 100%. So when I was working at Shell, uh, my wife left Exxon, and once she turned to Exxon, uh, she was she was home, she was helping me with the real estate uh, business, then she turned, uh, she uh, got that uh, real estate professional uh, checkbox, once she claimed that, our loss opened up. And then all of a sudden we're able to write off 100% depreciation. So more you actively you play, more you get to write off, right? So that's one. At the same time, I have been through an exercise two years ago where I had uh, some windfall and I wanted to execute the dollar. And I, I had the plan ready to execute. I had the project ready to execute, but the project could not close in December. It slipped over January. All of a sudden I had a huge tax bill that I had to foot. Right, so the planning and the execution risk are real, right? Awesome question. The question is, if invest with massive capital, does all the appreciation goes to uh, uh, investors uh, and or the sponsors? We split everything 70-30. Uh, so 70% of the depreciation goes to 100% of the LPs and 30% comes to us with an asterisk. If we have a friend, I mean, sometimes we get into a scenario, we have someone say, hey, Shirar, I have one and a half million dollars, a million dollars, can you give me some extra depreciation? We said, that's fine. Uh, if you have a large amount of money, then we'll give some depreciation from our end of it uh, to make their project, you know, uh, so their investment hypothesis is right. But usually it's a 70-30 split. We split 70-30 um, um, that way. And by some time, there are some scenarios we'll work with you um, to make sure that your investment hypothesis works out. Uh, we don't do it for uh, everybody. That's because it becomes a paperwork heavy. CPA has to do a lot of reconciliation on the back end. So we have to and I'll put you some different buckets, do some extra additional work and CPA has to go deal with it every single year. That paperwork, that extra work to mitigate that, uh, your investment check, uh, your investment size needs to be a little bit bigger than uh, the standard size of 75, $100,000. Good question, thank you.